all the time, I mean, you know, all that is cool for the image and all that, but all them is liabilities, you feel me? I'd rather invest in some real estate, you know what I'm saying? Something oh, wait, well, can you repeat that again, man? You're up and coming artist. What did you say you want to do? I say invest in some assets as opposed to trick off my money on some liabilities like diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Cars that lose value, so you drive them off the lot. You so you're trying, to, you're trying to get land. Exactly, homie. A real asset. Take care of my people because, you know, that's, that's, it, it look good, but at the end of the day, you're losing value, homie. It, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't appreciating, it's depreciating. It's what do you think? Uh, why do you think it's so hard for people to get that message? You know, I mean, one half you get guys that say they got to impress the females. Female ain't trying to talk to you unless you're blinged out. On the other hand, you got other people feel like they got to show off to the homies and impress them with their riches. I mean, what, what do you think is the? How do we get that out of that mindset? I Man, I feel like that's insecurity. Material things ain't nothing. You feel me? At the end of the day, it's who you is. You know, if you wasn't born with it, you gonna die without it. So, if you feel you need some some diamonds or some jewelry to get out of female. Cause you feel you lack something within yourself, you know what I mean? So all that, as far as that angle, it's like I feel that's insecure. We made it to the point now where motherfucker from Missoula, Montana could tell you more about the hood than a nigga from the hood. You feel me? <laughs> could tell you about some crippling and blood more than the nigga that, that's in that lifestyle. It's cause they, they got it under a microscope. They so fascinated and it's so so much of a phenomenon to them and it's so entertaining to see us kill each other and it's so exciting to them that you know they, they got it under a microscope. They damn near Study every, everything a nigga do, from a nigga walk to a, a nigga talk to a, the type of music you do. And I ain't talking about black and white, I'm just talking about, you know, street and non-street. Like, you know, guttering, suburb, you know what I mean? Like, just have not and have, you know what I'm saying? So, it ain't, I'm not just on black and white, you know what I mean? But it's a lot of that too. But, like you said, it's just, it's just like everything else. Africa was full of natural resources, but they do. All the diamonds, they came and got them. All the gold, they came and got it. All the niggas, they came and got us. You know what I mean? It's the, the, the continent is great with all its resources. So, you know what I mean? I guess the word they call it is colonialism. When they come and colonize your, 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 your land, take hey, the resources. Hey, nigga just thought you was a regular gang bang. Yeah, you know, I'm like I said. Using words uh, like that. Yeah, I'm, I just, you know, I, we, we said it earlier, like I, I educated myself. I, I, at one point I was ignorant and lost, but like you gotta know yourself before you do anything before you can make a record, before you can have an opinion, you gotta know yourself. Sometimes you gotta take two steps back to take 10 forward. I mean, I gotta fall back from having my jewelry, you know what I mean, having my everyday money, riding around the hood on leather and chrome, smoking weed all day, calling the homies up, you got that for me for sure, going to pick up 200 here, 500 here, 1,000 here, and that's my day. I had, to, I had to let go of that luxury, go back to being a young dude that was pinching every penny, maybe had $20 a day to spend, 10 on a sack of weed, 10 to eat, just so I could stay creative and work. And it was it was hard for my ego. And I was used to being that young fly nigga, take my pick of whatever female I want. At all the all the parties, all the clubs, all the, the spotlight was on me. I understand that you don't go hit the club and spend five racks at night off of your advance. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't I didn't did that with my street money and woke up the next day with no work and a gang of niggas calling my phone up and I'm missing all this money because I balled out last night and I, I hit the club crazy and I felt like I was that nigga for the one night as opposed to having a, a, a consistent progress. You know, just the way that it, it, it progressed over just issues with the police, issues with just the area, issues with just, uh, just the city of Los Angeles as a whole, and just the politics of, you know, tribalism and gang activity and just what we went through from um, getting raided, getting the shop taken, my brother going to the pen, um, myself catching the case, us losing the space, my brother coming back home, setting up a table at the bus stop on Crenshaw and Slauson, um, selling uh, socks and t-shirts, taking the first 1500, getting one of the spaces, and then it turning into, you know, um, all of the actual spaces being rented out, everything being renovated, uh, it's multiple employees, you know, it's actually a source of tourism at this point. All type of people from uh, Australia, Europe, Africa, all over the world is pulling up to the Crenshaw and Slauson. Um, and it's not to buy drugs, it's not to do anything illegal, it's to actually tap into the story and, and support. And so, you know, it's important that the people understand what that process was. Uh, Lauren London, that's you? Yeah, that's my girl. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, so so were y'all, how, how did y'all, were you guys rolling? Did she look over at you? At a man, real I had done an interview years ago when I first came in the game, and I said, I'm gonna get that girl. You know what I mean? And Damn. So, and then you know, how long from there? 
I was probably like, oh, no. Nah. Hey, man, oh, wow. so yeah, whatever like, plans oh, nah. you have, you know exactly, like, I what. I stick to the script, man. Yeah, yeah man, you know get saying? it. Mm-hmm. Nah, but that one thing I noticed about myself, when I, when I like, uh, I think, you know, thoughts is powerful in yeah. all facets. Because even my career, even my life, you know, things end up turning out exactly how I visualized them. Not, right. not in this time frame I expected. You know what I'm saying? You always want shit to happen overnight. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just had clear visions. You know, obviously outside of my grill. I just mean the music right, and, right, and right. hustling and just how I viewed myself as an adult when I was a young dude coming up. And uh, your thoughts powerful. That shit, you know, come to life if you stick to your script. Man. Basically what it is, is there's a, there's, a, there's a huge amount of value in this cryptocurrency space with trading and exchanging, different forms of currency, different times of acquisition, different times of selling. It's very similar to the stock market. So there's people over the last five, six years that became very successful trading currencies via different platforms. And so what it is is there'll be a big trade that takes place and you'll hear about it next week. And they try to mirror it, but the opportunity came in past, which is why we came to Amsterdam because there's a city out here where the whole city is cryptocurrency friendly. And this is a example of what's gonna happen to the rest of the world. And we think that if you get in now, when the value spreads, when the accessibility spreads, you'll be sitting on the right chair. And, um, you know, being out here further brought that to my attention. The two successful moves might cover the eight unsuccessful moves. You might have more information where you go really heavy into these two investors because you know what they're doing. And, you know, you might invest the whole hundred into these two, 50-50. But the type of returns that we're seeing in cryptocurrency is not 10%, it's not 7%, it's 700%. And so, you know, outside of the strength of the company, the capacity of the owner, just the model that they built was unique. So we wanted to come see it. And we did, when we saw it, it was something that we wanted to write a check for immediately, you know? So we cashed out yesterday. We locked in our acquisition of a percentage. Um, And you know, but follow coin, the distinguishing characteristic is that you're gonna follow the investors in real time that are successful in this space already. We involved, um, it's a lot of other very influential people involved. A lot of people who got wealthy, have flipped money, have become successful in this space already. And it's just starting, we shouldn't be last. Hip hop shouldn't be last on it, you know? We should be, we should be early adopters of this, you know? And y'all can say Hustle told you first. Yeah, basically before before my deal and before I really had an outlet to get my music out, I was just full-time hustling and part-time rapping. Like, I, I always had a passion for, for rap music. And I was always trying to create the situation to where I could, I could, I could do this full-time. 